everybody. My name is Smiley Observer, and welcome to the Paranormal Observer Podcast. Now, I know, I know, I know, I haven't done this in a while. It's been a minute. Um, so I'll give you my normal excuse. Life has complications. Things happen. What can I say? Um, it was my every intention to start off this year. I had a plan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make so many um, podcasts um, a month, and I'm, I'm actually supposed to be on number ten this month. But life has complications. What can I say? And your boy needs to get out there and make some money. So, <laughs> sorry. But anyway, I do have something for you today. Um, tonight, we're going to discuss La Llorona. Now, if you don't know anything about La Llorona or the weeping woman, um, this story of this particular entity comes from Mexico. Um, if you've never been to Mexico, you've got to go. Uh, San Juan... Um, <laughs> some of my marine buddies may know this or may not know this but when I was stationed in Camp Council, California many moons ago um, we would take a weekend and we would go down to Tijuana and we would you know go from bar to bar and, 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 and what not um, so we're not supposed to go down there Marines are forbidden from going to Tijuana without the permission of your command. So what did we do? We ignored the rules and we went down to Tijuana. <laughs> and my roommate tried to warn me. He was like, dude, don't go down there. And I was like, dude, I got to go down there, man. <laughs> I got to go. I got to go and see what's up, see what all the buzz is about. And I went down there and. Okay, here's what happened. It wasn't just me. It was me and a couple other guys. And we swung by a different barracks to pick up a different guy. And the minute I saw this guy, not knowing them, immediately I knew this guy's bad news. And I apologize for the traffic outside my window. It's, it's midnight and somebody's out there going hard on the hog so um when I saw the guy I knew he was trouble so anyway we drive all the way down to Tijuana and we're in this club the guy's like oh yeah I know her I know her she uh you know we're cool I know her we'll, we'll, she, will, she will get us in so we get into the club and the girl despite his pro proclamation that he knows her didn't seem to respond like oh yeah we, we're friends we go way back whatever anyway so we're in there we're dancing the music is loud and doom, 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 throbbing this guy's walking around with uh, alcohol and whistles and they're pouring the alcohol down people's throats and um it was just quite an interesting thing and so <laughs> Um, so I was sitting in the corner with one of my, uh, one of my roommates smoking a cigarette and all of a sudden that guy that I knew was trouble gets into a little bit of a chest pushing match with some other guys who were American, but they were not Marines we're marines could we defend ourselves absolutely should we be in mexico absolutely not <laughs> so i'm i'm watching this and and they're squaring off and they're staring at each other his group is staring at him and i am already in the corner i am away from the situation i ain't got nothing to do with any of this but i'm interested so i'm standing there got my cigarette in hand I'm like 
man, what's going to happen next? And that guy, that waitress who the guy claimed, oh, where we go way back. She's my girl. We were friends. I know her. She goes down there and she goes and she gets the police. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you know anything about Mexican police, uh, as bad as you think American police are, Mexican police aren't very far from that. <laughs> Meaning they're serious business. They're serious about their jobs. And uh, um, obviously there's corruption, to say the least, as with any police force. So the policia comes upstairs. And they see, they ignore the two white guys facing off. And they made a beeline straight for me. And I'm like, oh, oh, it's okay. I'm not in this. I'm just watching. But they grabbed me and that guy grabbed my arm or twisted it behind my back. And I started to resist because, you know, I'm intoxicated. So I'm like, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Get off me. I'm not in this. And finally, the more I resist, the more he attacked. So I just, I just calmed down. And I cooperated. And he kicked me out of the club. We got down to the bottom stairs. And he just kind of pushed me out into the street. And I'm like. And so I'm going down the stairs. And I'm thinking. Oh man. I'm going to Mexican jail. Oh man. I'm going to have to call my command. And come and bail me out. Oh man. I'm about to get busted down. They're going to take rank. They're going to take money. I'm going to. Oh, my career in the Marine Corps is over. Needless to say. That didn't happen. The guy just kicked me out of the club. And so I'm like, okay, so I'm standing on the street, Tijuana, Mexico, and by myself. And um, the Mexican police leaves. And I'm like, and I didn't think about this until years later. I'm like, the white guys were facing off, literally about to tear each other apart. But you come and grab the black guy <laughs> and kicked him out the club. <laughs> anyway it is what it is but um, the reason why I chose La Llorona is because um, she's a, a Mexican specter and there is video evidence to support this particular specter now she's known as the wailing woman or the whaler According to my notes here, um, Hispanic American mythical vengeful ghost who was said to roam waterfront areas mourning her children whom she drowned. So, basically, this um, this woman, excuse me here, let me turn my phone down. So, something happened with like somebody called or something. Wow. Interrupt. So, the Mexican, the, the, this woman, and, and this and this lore goes way back to like conquistador days um and it's to the point that over the years the lore has changed and you know just like most lore most legends um whatever it started out it's changed but the gist of the story is she was married to uh um to a soldier she was a native he was a Spaniard. Um, they were married. They had two kids. But pressure from the Spaniard family on the soldier caused him to abandon her and to go um, back to Spain and marry a Spanish woman. It just is what it is. And this woman in her vengeance and the betrayal that was done to her she took her kids down to the river and she drowned them and then she killed herself and ever since then she's been roaming streets of mexico as a vengeful ghost so um and and this uh, my paperwork here kind of backs that up 
one of the most common lore about La Llorona. <laughs> I'm sorry, my Spanish is not very good. It should be good, but um, because I'm lazy and I don't <laughs> didn't practice my Spanish the way that I should have, I can't speak it very well. But La Llorona uh, uh, includes her initially being an indigenous woman who murdered her own children. She was um, she uh, which she bore from a wealthy Spaniard. Okay, so he was wealthy. And he abandoned her. And the villainous qualities of La Llorona include infant side and the murdering of one's own blood. This is soon to be connected with the narrative surrounding um, Doña Marina. Uh, also known as La Malinche or Maltinsen in their original nomenclature. Today, the lore of La Llorona is well known in Mexico and the southwestern United States, um, also in Texas. So all of those southwestern um, um, states that um, um, have a predominant Mexican or, or Spanish influence, they're familiar with the story. And um, the stories of weeping female phantoms are common in folklore, um, both Liberian and Amerindian cultures. Now, thinking about it, La Llorona, vengeful ghost, husband did her wrong, she murdered her kids, killed herself, and now she's become this vengeful ghost that roams around crying for her children. Um, does she remind you of anyone? Um, particularly a woman of Japanese descent with the slit face. Yes, her. So in, in Japanese lore, there is a, another vengeful ghost who on the surface looks pretty and she'll pose a question to you and she'll ask, am I pretty? And it's kind of a catch-22. If you say no, then she kills you and does some other horrible thing to you. If you say yes, then she'll reveal her hideous scars. And she'll ask, am I pretty now? Of course, the answer is no, you're worse now. Now, this particular woman was married to a samurai and and there's just different variations of this lore as well she the the, the samurai goes off to, to do battle comes back to discover that she had been unfaithful to him and to punish her he slit her face from here to here the corners of her mouth and I can't remember if that killed her or uh, if she took her own life because of the shame that he brought upon her. But either way, she becomes this vengeful spirit that, um, that roams around and she visits this vengeance upon unsuspecting people. And um, very scary. I don't want to meet either one of these women. Now, um, and La Yarona reminds me of that particular Japanese folklore. But um, the difference is La Yarona wasn't harmed by her spouse. She actually did the, she wasn't physically harmed by him she did the harming she went and she drowned her kids and took her own life and so now she's become this vengeful spirit that goes around wailing in the streets and I can't remember the tiktoker's name um I'm, I'm shouting her out because um I like her channel and she has a video as soon as I find her in here. 
Come on. You're in here somewhere. I know because I saved the video. Because I wanted to show. Oh my goodness, did I? Oh, I went past it. Okay, so let me pause this. So this particular TikTok talker's name, because I want you guys to go and check out her channel. I'm um, giving her a shout out. Her name is Shine Bright with Star. All together, just put the at Shine Bright with Star, and she discusses La Llorona in great detail. And she even has a video that somebody took um, of um, La Llorona um, going about the streets doing her wailing. And um, there's another video, and it may be hers. I can't remember. I, I've watched quite a few of her videos, but I can't remember if this was ours hers. Um, she obviously isn't the only um, TikToker that's talking about La Llorona. But um, um, someone actually was walking out at night, and they heard La Llorona, and um, they actually had a video and they saw like the white dress um um walking um but if you were in Mexico and you were walking down the streets and you, at night and you heard her you don't want to approach her you don't want to you don't want to interfere with this particular specter um it's a vengeful spirit it could be very aggressive and you don't want to get hurt um unless you're one of those kinds of persons that goes for babies goes are real and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do what I wanna do and then you find yourself learning that there are evil spirits out there there are I wish there wasn't I wish this was all relegated to just a story or just a movie but unfortunately um our world is a little more complicated than what you think it just is and there's too much evidence to support that but why am i trying to convince you you're a smart person you you can make your own decisions but um the point is um she talks about steps to take like if you're in your home and you hear la yarona walking the streets wailing what you should do is lock your doors lock your windows stay quiet turn off your lights and do not respond to her wailing just sit there quietly until she passes you don't want to get her attention and I'm saying that while my window's wide open. Earlier tonight, I heard a, I heard a pop, and a car alarm is going off. And I went, I, I went outside. To, I was going to go outside to see what it was, and I asked my roommate if he, did you hear that? He was like, "Yeah, it sounded like a gunshot," and I'm like. You sure it was a gunshot? <laughs> and um, obviously, we're military people. We know what gunshots sound like. But the more I began to think about it, I'm like, was it a gunshot? Or was somebody like playing with some and maybe firecrackers or something? I don't know. Uh, stranger things have happened. Um. But I heard the shot and I was going to go outside and check it out, but I decided not to. But when the shot went off, it kind of startled me. I'm like, okay, what's going on? And I got my own piece near, but you know, it just is what it is. Um, there's no guarantee that I can adequately defend myself against a shot that I don't know where it came from or, or who pulled the trigger or if it wasn't even a trigger being pulled. You know, so 
right outside, so she would help me out from down the stupid. Um, but anyway, my point is, I'm sitting here, my window's open. Um, if this were Mexico, and I heard wailing, I would definitely have to close the window. <laughs> I don't want to deal with any vengeful spirits. I don't want to deal with the crazy people that I know in real life. You know, much less a, a entity from the other side of the veil. <laughs> no. But um, that's La Llorona. And there's... There's a lot of different variations of this story. For instance, while the roots of La Llorona legend appear to be pre-Hispanic, the earliest published reference to the legend is a 19th century sonnet by a Mexican poet Manuel Carpio. The poem makes no reference to infanticide. Rather, La Llorona is identified as the ghost of a woman named Rosarita who was murdered by her husband. Um, the legend of La Llorona is deeply rooted in Mexican popular culture. Her stories told to children to encourage them not to wander off in the dark and her spirit often evoked artwork such as the Alejandro Colunga La Chija Cualte Leyenda Leyenda de la Llorona is a yearly waterfront theatrical performance of the legend of La Llorona set in the the, the Zochi the Zochi Milko borough of Mexico City. Established in 1993 to coincide with the Day de los Muerte. Now, <laughs> I made it through that. It was, I had some rough spots, but I made it through. <laughs> Ooh, that was rough in here. But, uh, it's uh the like I said, the story varies. The origin is thought to be back in the conquistador days, and then even the Spaniard uh no the conquistador for Spaniards. Um uh, it's been attributed to different situations. And um it's out there. Now in Guatemala, according to the local legend in Guatemala City lived a woman who had an affair with a lover. She became pregnant, gave birth to a child named Juan de la Cruz, who she drowned so her husband would not know. The woman was condemned to the afterlife to search for her murdered son in every place where there's a pool of water. She does that by crying out for him, hence her moniker of the Wailing Woman, La Llorona. It is a popular scary legend in one alliteration or another has been told to generations of children. The terrifying cry of, Oh, my children, I miss hijos, is well known due to the means that the ghost is nearby. But if the cry is heard nearby, it means the ghost is afar. Someone unlucky enough to face the specter is won over to the afterlife, never to be seen again. Y'all trying to scare kids? Y'all scaring me, and I'm an adult. <laughs> uh, in the United States, uh, in the Southwest of the United States, the story of La Llorona is told to scare children into good behavior. Mm -hmm. Sometimes specifically to deter children from playing near dangerous water. Also told to them is her cries are heard as she walks around the street near bodies of water to scare her children from wandering around, resembling the stories of El Kukoi and Chumash mythology, indigenous to Southern California. La Llorona is linked to the Nunasis, a mythological, mythological creature with a cry similar to that of a newborn baby. Now, this theme of specters or ghosts hanging out near water isn't, isn't, isn't new. Um, I don't think that's uh, in a lot of lore around the world. For instance, I worked with a, a, an African gentleman. Um, he was a Muslim. And we discussed on uh, different occasions about spirits and whatnot. And he was telling me that when they were kids, they were taught 
who don't hang around a body of water at night. And like kids tend to do. Yeah, okay. They, um, he and some of his friends were walking somewhere and they walked past this small body of water. And he said as he walked, he noticed there was a couple sitting by the water. And they were just talking. I don't think he could hear what was being said. But they were there. And um, as they walked, they it, it was just a weird situation. I think they were looking at them. But um, anyway, they kept walking. And then another time, and I think it may have been the same night, or maybe a different time, they were walking past the water again. And again, there's this couple sitting by the water having a conversation and looking at them and they recognize this as a as a supernatural event and it caused them to take note and it reminded them of what they were taught as kids and they made haste and got out of there so um, while some of these stories are told to scare kids um some of them are rooted in some truth. All legends are rooted in, rooted in some truth. Like there's a time when I used to think the the Greek and the Roman gods, Zeus and Apollo and um, uh, Mercury and all of these guys, I didn't think they existed. Uh, but because I mean, you know. The legends of the feats that they they did but um i myself am a christian and i believe in the bible and what the word of god says and i read where the bible refers to men of old men of renown and i always wondered who were these renowned men what did they do that were causing them to be renowned. And it's even been said that these renowned men and women um, were where the uh, idea of Zeus and all of these Greek and Roman gods came from. But don't quote me on that. That's just that's just speculation and we'll leave it at that um, so I'm going to check my clock for a moment because I want to see how much time I have that's a lot I have left time so I'm going to get through this Venice Suelia the tale of La Llorona is set in the Venezuelan Llanos during the colonial period La Llorona is said to be the spirit of a woman that died of sorrow after her children were killed either by herself or by her family. Families traditionally even place wooden crosses above their doors to ward of such spirits. I've seen that, you know, as a kid of my own. But this crying for all eternity seemed a heavy price to pay and is said to be the fate of the wailing woman. So, uh... Who knows if it really is La Llorona? Who, who knows if um, poor Rosalita is um, doomed to wander the netherworld, phasing in and out of the veil, looking for her kids? What a sad, sad, what a sad, sad eternity for her. Um, especially if they were killed at her own hands. Her punishment to look for her kids and never find them. And to just uh, constantly just roam the, 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 the dark places of the earth. Searching for something that she can never find. And especially the idea that she herself took their lives. That goes beyond what a mother would do you know mothers they have that natural instinct to protect their kids parents fathers too they have that natural instinct to protect their kids but we all know 
some people they had issues and um, it may cause them to override that parental thing to protect and they take the lives of their own kids it's really really sad that these things happen but um hey it happens so i'm gonna end this uh, I want to thank you for stopping and thank you for listening and um, thank you for giving the Paranormal Podcast a chance. And I want you to be careful out there. Whatever you do, wherever you go, regardless of the situation. Um, it's starting to get cold again here in the United States. And right now, we are between hot during the day 80 degrees and cold at night 40 degrees this is the time when people start getting sick so I already plan to start wearing masks again um, I never really stopped I take that back I did stop I got sick of wearing masks but because the cold and flu season is coming up again I'm going to start wearing masks again because I don't want to get sick and I don't want to be sick and make everybody else sick. Okay? So, just be careful. You know, wherever you go, whatever you do, think, um, be aware of your surroundings. And if you're a ghost hunter, do your thing, man. But if you're not a ghost hunter, don't, don't, don't go looking for something you don't, you don't want to find. Because you might not like what you find. All right. Thank you for for being here with me tonight. This is the Paranormal Observer Podcast. My name is Smile and Observer. And I'm out.